today I'll be talking to you about listening. I feel like listening is a underrated topic and so important to our Christian walk and to our relationships. Have you ever been in a conversation where you realize that in the middle of it someone else is not genuinely listen to you and you can tell when someone's not listening to you they are either waiting to talk or not open to what you're saying and I've been guilty of this myself. I find myself thinking about what I'm gonna have for lunch or distracted by just the busyness of life. Listening can be a challenge in our lives when life gets busy or we have a lot going on or even a challenge when we're talking to somebody and we don't necessarily agree with what they're saying. To listen, we have to set aside our own biases. To listen is a challenge and a challenge to our own worldview and a challenge to be present in the moment and be present and open to this person and a challenge to know the person better and to love them better. Genuine listening is dangerous to our personal worldview because it asks us to step outside ourselves and have empathy for another person. Listening is so important in relationships and listening is talked about throughout the Bible and the Old and New Testament. Philippians 2.4 says, let each of you look not only to his own interests but also to the interests of others. So to look to the interests of others, we have to step outside of ourselves. We have to hear what they're saying to know their interests. We have to set aside and not get distracted by our own interests. To know someone better is to understand them. And this idea of knowing is talked about throughout the Old and New Testament. The Bible calls us to know God and to know other people. It's the number one commandment. Our greatest command in the Old and New Testament is to love God and to love other people and this idea of knowing plays a huge part in that. To know in the Old Testament is a Hebrew word yada which means more than just to understand someone's what they're saying it's to have an intimate relationship with them so this idea is talked about in Genesis 18, 19. God says to Abraham, I know him, and that implies he loves Abraham. He's close to Abraham. It's also talked about in Genesis 4, 1. It says Adam knew Eve, his wife, implying they had an intimate relationship. So this idea to know implies being close to one another. Mark 12, 28 through 31 states, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no command greater than these. God wants love from you that is genuine and heartfelt and he wants to know you and the greatest command starts with hearing and to hear plays into listening so god wants to you to love him by hearing him and by knowing him and he calls us the second command to love other people and to know other people and to do that we have to listen to them so if listening is such a challenge how can we listen better I came up with a few practical tips for this. So number one, put aside your biases and pride. To set aside your biases and pride is to set aside your preconceived notions of who other people are and be open to what they have to say. Setting aside your pride can be an act of humility and it can be open to hearing that this person that you're speaking to might have something to teach you. They have a unique worldview and they have a unique set of skills and gifts and to be open to learning from them is a huge tool to help you really listen and genuinely engage with that person. Another tip would be listening with the intention of knowing someone better. When you're listening with going into a conversation and listening with that intention in mind, you can set aside your pride better, you can genuinely listen to know them in a way that steps into their worldview in an empathetic way and to know someone better is to love them better. So when you listen with the intention of knowing some better, someone better, you can therefore love them better. 
Another tip I would have would be listening with empathy. So empathy is stepping out of your own world into someone else's world. It's imagining what their world is like and how they're feeling and what they're thinking. And to listen, we can really step outside ourselves and genuinely know someone better. In my experience, when I'm talking to somebody, a lot of people sometimes don't want advice. They just want to be feel like you're hearing them, feel like you are there with them, supporting them. And listening can be a huge tool and a huge way to connect with someone in that way. My final tip would be a call to action. Listen with the intention of finding ways to serve people better. When you're listening, you can pick up key things that, oh, this person has this need, or this person might benefit from me in this way. I can serve them in this way. And James 1.22 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So hearing is only the first step to knowing someone. If you're hearing and you're genuinely processing and putting yourself in their shoes and really knowing what they're saying, it's a call to action and it's calling you to take action. God wants us to not only hear but to serve and be part of each other's life. Love is more than just a feeling and uh, a hope, love is a call to action as well. So in your conversations today, find a person that you can intentionally go in to know better, intentionally listen to know them better, and then find a way to serve them better in your life. Thanks for listening.